French. <laughs> and I'm designing typeface since uh, 28 years. Uh, and sorry in advance my, for my French accent. <clears throat> uh, thinking is not tangible. It's why we need uh, words. We need words to express our ideas. Uh, they are in between or through on the final visualization of any piece of design. In the beginning, use, humans use their voice to exchange their true and emotion. <clears throat> Later, we invented writing to record voice on thinking to keep ideas alive uh, for centuries. It's not the last iPhone application who is very helpful to record the true, but it's writing. <clears throat> Later, with the invention of uh, printing, um, typeface industry uh, emerged. And much late, later, in the 70s, 80s, as Steve Jobs wanted back in the early day of Lisa computer for the word processor, he wanted that we user can set text on the typeface they want. When you design a typeface, um, or when you are a graphic designer, maybe, better. Do you limit yourself um, the design of, of um, the design of identity of a logo type uh, to a specific genre like a square, square heavy strong typeface just because it should be used on a, on a truck? Never. Uh, Ladislas Mondal uh, is a French type designer who have done a lot of telephone book typeface in the 70s. And uh, for, uh, for each of his typeface, the first goal for him was to make the typeface uh, match perfectly the country he worked for, for Lusitania, for Portugal. The shape are completely different than the one he made for the Colorado typeface at the end of the life uh, for US directory. So each time his typeface performed very well for legibility, but also it addressed the cultural um, element who is very important for him to make the typeface legible for people. <coughs> When I was asked to design Parisine in 95, it was just for a CNH typeface. Parisine is a key part of the global identity of the public transport in Paris, as the ceramic wall on, um, the, ceramic wall on the station for the metro. Um, but because it's a typeface, it goes much more than any piece of design because of the words. And the word changed the typeface. Year after year, uh, Parisine become one of the visual symbols of the capital of France. <clears throat> the typeface, it's a democratic typeface because it was a typeface uh, um, just in the beginning as a signage typeface. But soon after, year after year, the people wanted to use for maps, for, for not just for metro, but for buses and many other things, advertisements. And when people see the typeface, they see uh, Paris in, in the typeface, and as you can see, for the National Cup, when, we want, when France won, they change the sign and, and, and put the name of the sum of the player to, to thank the national, the national team. And it was very big hit on, on a social network that day. The typeface is used on buses with a simple signage like that. But uh, recently, like everywhere in, uh, everywhere in the world, they begin to use this uh, big uh, lead box on, the, on their buses to change uh, the text. But the problem with, with lead box is, okay, they follow the state regulations that you have the typeface bigger as possible to be legible. But the problem with such legibility, it's, it's letter forms done by engineer who doesn't know what its user experience. And when you have so large typeface, you're not able to read the word because the word move, have to move to be read on the bus move, so you stop uh, any, any possibility to read anything. So the first thing for me was to come back to lowercase and to have a very specific shape influenced by writing. So like that, the B is not, um, <clears throat> is not a mirror version of the D, and every shape are influenced by writing, so their counter are very specific. As well, the five is different from the six, that is not on the image with the because of the diagonal. After many, many months or even years of test, testing uh, with people at RATP, the company, uh, the du duty, because it's a public company, was to do user test. I hate user test. <laughs> because, <coughs> In Paris, uh, the main station, you have six million passengers every day. And does it possible to rely on 50 people 
and to make the life of six million passengers a nightmare because these 50 people don't know what it's designed. They don't know the, 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 the background, they don't know what to do. Uh, so I try to reduce the question as the most basic question as possible to avoid to have a, a big problem with the typeface. But one of them was quite interesting. Do you prefer that the typeface to be centered on, on, the, on the block or uh, a line to the left? And for sure, they selected center right. Why they selected center right? It was a bad choice. Center right because at school, maybe their teacher say to them, okay, title, title have to be center right on the page. That's it, they don't know. They are just stupid, users are stupid. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> at W Conquero, I presented this typeface in 2010 in Los Angeles Typecon. And uh, the Dido in particular on the family was quite su successful, so I wanted to, inc to, uh, to, to add much more weight on, on, on things on the typeface. Adding uh, swash for the lower case. The typeface is obviously influenced by Pistilli typeface. Such typeface was uh, published in the mid 60s and used a lot by people like um, uh, Air, Air Blue Balloon st Studio, like uh, Louis Philly, probably used such typeface at the time in the 70s. <clears throat> and now the typeface exists with different weights. On with open type feature, you can add a lot of things, different kind of open type who change the color of the text. On the top of that, we, we had uh, uh, three variations for rel relatively small size or headlines, um, normal on large size with very high contrast. Um, at the end, I, I've got the idea to add some, some box. So if you set some um, text with parentheses on brackets, on, on asterisk, something like that, you switch the open type and you have a different kind of, of, of effect with this box. When you design typeface, <coughs> generally you are influenced by, by classification. So you say, I will design a Dido typeface or, or you are influenced by type specimen or your colleagues, something like that. But sometimes it's interesting to try to go beyond what it's type design. So in, in this typeface, who stay on the box uh, for many years, at, at the time I was influenced by uh, the, the shape of uh, the, the, the very fast, what I call fast curve of, of the cars. So you can see here that there is some, some connection with certain shape in design of the car with the typeface. At the end, it's just another typeface, but some tension are in, are, came from other fields on just typeface design. For sure, when you have a typeface and when you have a color, you have a brown, and the German agree on that. Uh, on on, on uh, this nice publication from Adobe found on Function in the mid-90s, uh, um, they, they have some page where they just show the same business card with a different uh, selection of typeface with different color and it changed completely the contents because of the choice of the typeface. But the best thing is to have the best POC font and probably the first custom font ever um, <coughs> was designed for the King of France, Louis XIV. The Louis XIV have a very good identi uh, corporate identity. Uh, com commercial architecture, it's a chateau de Versailles. And you have the palette of colors, you have arms, and he have his own specific typeface, Romain du Roi, uh, the Roman of the king, and uh, he have his own uh, DNA on some letter form, like the L, the small serif here. <coughs> so when you have a specific typeface, like it was for the new fast metro in Paris in the 70s, the typeface is part of the DNA of the identity of the company. So the typeface, because of the word, because of the shape, transmits uh, the feeling of the identity. In this case, it was Albert Botton designing a typeface for Roger Talon, uh, <coughs> a famous French designer. But you can see that on the typeface, the shape of the typeface are very much influenced by the style of Roger Talon for this new uh, fast metro. It's a little bit like for sci-fi movie when you try to invent a world which still have to be discovered. But in fact, you realize that you're just designing the world of today or the dream of the future. But very, very soon after, you realize that it's just your world. Um, and you can see that we, with architecture, uh, it, it, it's, it's, there is some um, very big influence on the way we live because of the shape of the house and things like that. And there is a lot of study about architecture. Even for kids, you have the Villa, Villa Savoy by uh, Le Corbusier available. Probably the parents by the villa build the, the, the villa for, the, for their kids. And you can do uh, draw analogy with typeface. Like this Villa Savoy was designed in 28, like the Futura 28 also. 
on these two, two things. It's something that you want to leave on this, on, on, not on the typeface, but leave on this building, but use the typeface. Um, so I, what I can say, it's design of, of typeface is very system enable activity uh, because it survived to any uh, design trend, it survived to any new technology, but it's not the case with car. So you have to stall car on stop to stall typeface. It's better for the planet, even. <coughs> But there is a difference between typeface and architecture. Is typeface, you have the words. On the word, change the typeface. There is this uh, common uh, joke between type designer, people looking at type specimen, type specimen, and they say, yes, this typeface looks very Spanish, and this typeface looks very German. But in fact, it's just because the specimen is set in German or Spanish, not because the typeface is Spanish or German, because the shape of the typeface are just shape of typeface. It's because of the use that it changes the meaning of the typeface. <clears throat> in 2004, the Baltimore Sun wanted me to design a French Zido because at the time my American uh, friends say they, they have got the worst president ever in, in, in US. And they say this Baltimore Sun wanted to have, you know, a typeface more open to this whole Europe from where I came from. So I designed a, a Dido typeface on a more oblique axis typeface with interpolation between the two sides to have the intermediate size. And later I expanded much more the typeface to be published by Tipo Fondry, adding much more widths on different uh, axes on different kind of things, italics, something like that. And when you design italics, you have uh, the fancy on person, different size, um, high contrast version. And, and for sure, I, I, I follow the path of Matthew Carter with higher small caps because the small cap I use for the first line in, 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 um, in publication. Um, at the end, when you do such large project, you have to do a lot of tests because the tests are, are very important to check that the weight goes through the different uh, optical size or different width, and, and it's completely optics, it's not matte or, or any, any kind of thing. So you're looking and you, you take a decision as a designer. For sure, the typeface is now finished and available, launched uh, last year. Um, besides, it was already in use in different publications through the world. <clears throat> and the last thing I wanted to, to have is to have a specimen. So I asked to Claudia Delmeida, the past design director of Wire, to use the quote from Menken, this famous writer, author, journalist at the uh, Baltimore publication. And I really wanted to have his quote used for the specimen because the quote, I use this, this new president of, of US, Mr. Trump. And the, the people use on social network this quote against the president. And I think it's very interesting to see all the, the power of words can have on the typeface on, on, on people. At Tipo Fondry, we have a cat, and the, the cat, when he doesn't sleep, he checks. Uh, he has done a final inspection for the specimen. Thanks, thanks Molly. Hello. <coughs> for the Galerie Lafayette, um, <coughs> it's a large department store in Paris. <coughs> and um, the idea was to demonstrate to them with this analogy of, of publications that a department store is like a, a fashion magazine. You need a lot of different kind of typeface to address a different kind of department uh, communication. <coughs> so uh, that was my idea to say to them, you need more than just one weight as they ask to me. And after a couple of months, at the end, we finish with a very large typeface family with different widths, different italics, Roman, different, even different kind of style of typeface altogether. The typeface was launched as a new identity on the, the, the honor of, the, of Galerie Lafayette. The first, the first Instagram he post, it was about the typeface, not the new logo type. And you can see that the typeface is used conjointly with the Parisian because we are in Paris. <clears throat> and the typeface is used for everything at the Galerie Lafayette, signage, advertisement, publication. It's, it's everywhere on the shop. <coughs> for Isson, <coughs> He was born as a singulier uh, for Yves Saint Laurent Beauty. And here we came to the... Thank you very much. I will die before the end. Um, we came to uh, something interesting because you have, the you have the designer who are very visible to people, uh, Yves Saint Laurent. Uh, the name says something to people. And the invisible guy, the graphic designer, the type designer, nobody knows about this guy. If so long, you know his design is beautiful, is very well done, I love that. Um, but when people are looking to the logotype of Yves Saint Laurent, they're thinking about Yves Saint Laurent, but in fact, what they see is that the style of Cassandre. He's not a guy nude on the photograph, he's a guy working late at home to make the, to make the deadline. 
but it's really this style. So the idea with the typeface, it was to mix the two things, to make one typeface, a sans serif, with this little flower of the um, Casson logotype. And then it was used everywhere at Yves Saint Laurent. And when I wanted to, to expand the typeface, to publish the typeface uh, last year too, it was a reborn. So adding more weight, adding italics, and adding certain things like the pointed, uh, the, the very thin punctuation for display typography or the pointed terminals, as you can see here uh, with these two slides. On the top of that, I added a Mondrian version in homage to Yves Saint Laurent dress from 64 uh, with a lot of layers that you can use. And it's very nice to, to, to do all this combination. On this typeface, this version is free for download at Typofondry. <coughs> On the last project, started with a, a, a private message uh, between the art director of the new movement, political movement, uh, in, in France called En Marche. And he sent me a, a message and he said, I want uh, you, because you are a good designer, blah, 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 to help us to make the candidacy of, of Emmanuel Macron, you know, to become president. And he was looking to Hillary Clinton, uh, um, conversation with designer to make to help the candidacy of, of, of her uh, the year before. And the first thing I've done was a, a simple sticker like that, uh, using a, a typeface I was working on. And uh, they were very happy, they wanted to do much more things, but it was at the, at the end of the campaign. We are very late on a very small group of people working on, on the design. Uh, but at the end of the campaign, they begin to use my Mencken typeface for, the, the, for the, the quote of Emmanuel Macron. And the first tweet of Emmanuel Macron was so quote uh, set on the Mencken typeface as well. His famous tweet in France called Make the Planet Great Again set in Mencken typeface too. But once they, uh, when he, okay, he won the election, I was very happy like many French. And then uh, they, they have to select a few typefaces when they, they, they've got hired at the Palais Elysees, the French White, White House. So I said to them, you need three typefaces. Altes, it's a sort of script. And after you have the PS Fournier, uh, designed by Stéphane Elbaz, because it's a revolution typeface, so it's very nice for a president. And they've got this sans serif typeface. And this sans serif typeface, they've got the beta version, so we're still working on it. And what is interesting on this typeface, it's the lower case are much like a grotesque one. The caps are more like little Art Deco feeling. So depending the use um, of, of the context of, of the use, it changes a little bit the, what the message you have with the typeface. With these very wide numerals who fit very well the caps. And even uh, on such typeface, when you just change the G, it changes completely the feeling of the typeface, as here. Thank you very much. And if you have some question about Thai Paris, I will be happy to answer on the side after my talk. Thank you very much.